Hi, James. Hey there, Rory. How are you doing? I'm great. I'm great. Thanks for well, having me. Thanks so much for the experience of watching um, Chicago Party on. It was a, a lot of fun. <laughs> oh, good, good. I love it. So I'm glad other people are loving it too. Yeah, so um, first of all, why was it something that you um, wanted to devote your time to being a part of? Yeah, well, uh, first of all, I'm from Cleveland. I'm from the Midwest. So telling a very Midwest story was so exciting to me. And I love the fact that it's really a love story between an aunt and her nephew. I have a whole pack of aunts who took care of me. My mom was a single mom and, you know, just a bunch of women in my life who were related to me or not. They were my aunts. And I think it's such a, a great relationship that really doesn't get explored too often. So uh, it also happens to be hilarious, so funny. And it also was an amazing gay character. Daniel is a, a 18 year old gay kid and it's not about him coming out. Clearly his family accepts him. It's like moved past that and is about him becoming an adult and figuring out who he is even beyond his sexual orientation. And I was so appreciative that they cast a gay person in a gay role. It's always nice when that happens. <laughs> it's really interesting. It seems to me it's part of a, a new trend or a new phase in uh, introducing LGBTQ characters into shows that aren't necessarily, you know, not everyone is LGBTQ. Um, they just, uh, you know, Aunt Diane mentions that, um, you know, she she's seen the peach scene from Call Me By Your Name because right. uh, found it on his computer. And then, you know, D Daniel starts talking about having a crush on a guy. And yeah, could you talk a little bit more about that approach? Just the fact that, it, you know, th there's no sort of inner turmoil or a big sort of coming out moment. Right. No. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure there could one day be a flashback episode to Daniel, like saying like, oh, mom, dad, Aunt Diane, I'm gay, moving on. But clearly it was not something that was too big of a deal for this family. And I think coming out stories, especially ones that are difficult, are so important to tell. But it's also important to tell the stories of gay people who are in families that are absolutely accepting of them to show what that looks like to to say like this person didn't have a difficult time with their parents and everything was fine you know and to move on from that and to actually talk about becoming an adult because yes being a gay person you have to uh, encounter different struggles but you also just have to learn how to get a job <laughs> <laughs> and and to feed yourself when you're 18 or when you're out of college. And so those are big, scary things for everyone. And I think it's just great to see it through a lens of, of a, a character who is gay, but not necessarily have that be what the entire character is about. And Gideon, who's voiced by uh, RuPaul on the show, um, it, it's kind of balanced out. You know, he's he's an older character. Yes. And at one point, Diane sort of mistakenly, um, you know, in good, good faith, sort of just mistakenly outs him to um, his mother. And yeah. so it's kind of balanced out in, you know, it's in the real world when not everyone necessarily feels comfortable about being out to everybody in their life. Yes. No, it's a generational change and it's happening so quickly, you know, that um, I'm kind of right in between that, you know, I'm not 18 and I'm, I'm not RuPaul's age, but I think that the gay community and, and gay culture has, has really influenced um, generations differently. And now, you know, I go back to my high school and, and there are gay kids there who are wanting to ask their partners to the prom, you know, and I went to a Catholic high school. So it was like, you didn't even want anyone to know you were gay. So things have changed so much and they changed when I was, when I was in high school. So obviously a, a gay person's relationship to their parents or to society is going to be different based on when they grew up. And I, I think you're right. Like having those two gay characters and their experiences juxtaposition next to each other is really telling. It's such smart writing yeah. and it's just, it's a, a really great, um, group of people who put this show together and I know that was a priority for them to get that right. Because it is hilarious at times but there's also some poignant moments in, in there too. Um, could you tell us a little bit about um, creating your character and if there was anything in particular that you honed in on as you were going about sort of um, creating that characterization and the voice for him? Yeah you know what it, it, it's funny because um Something that I had to make sure that I learned from Lauren and from Matt Craig, our showrunner and the writers is, you know, there's a lot of times where Diane puts Daniel in 
situations that make him incredibly uncomfortable, you know, and he's like pushed to his limits, sometimes for the better, sometimes just it, it seems cruel. But at the end of the day, I had to remember that Daniel loves his aunt. You know, this isn't a like get her away from me. He says in the show, sadly, you're my best friend. And I think it's very true that that his aunt, no matter how wild and crazy she is and how uncomfortable she makes him, is his best friend. And he can't he has to be able to laugh about some of the things that she does. She's not always disgusting to him. He's also 18 years old. And some of the things that I'm like, ooh, an 18 year old be like, my aunt's crazy, you know, and just laugh about it. So that kind of, you know, was something that I had to remember playing a, a younger character. And, um, and, you know, at, at the end of the day, the rest of it was just me going back to uh, my younger days in Cleveland and remembering all too well the anxiety <laughs> that I had back then. And as you say, that aunt nephew kind of that kind of dynamic is not what you see very often. So it sort of put me in mind of, you know, like if Auntie Mame was sort of living in Chicago in 2021, working two and a half days as a hairdresser. Um, yes, you know, <laughs> that is absolutely I can I cannot believe I didn't come up with that comparison myself. It is the Chicago modern Auntie Mame. I'm going to tell all my gay friends that's why they should watch <laughs> I know. Well, that will definitely draw people in. Um, yeah. Did you get to have any kind of interaction with, with Lauren or with any of the other voice cast? Or were you kind of always working in isolation? You know, we were always working in isolation to agree, just like everybody else over the last year and a half. But we've gotten to know each other over video calls like, like we're having now. And we've gotten to know each other through our performances and just table reads and, and things like that. And it's, it really saved me throughout this, this year and a half, because I was doing Hamilton uh, here in LA and it got canceled because of, of COVID. And all of a sudden my creative outlets were completely gone and being able to come in to my garage where here, where I recorded all of the episodes from home and have a laugh with these amazing writers and this cast was such an incredible experience. And it really, it got me through uh, the last year and a half. And I'm not just saying that I'll, this show has such a special place in my heart because of that. I think a lot of people are still having, you know, a, a tough time as we're still, yeah. in this, still in the midst or not out of the pandemic yet. So right. um, it's a really joyful thing um, to watch and we still need these shows. So I think over, you know, say we haven't had theater, people are really like, um, been very grateful for the the tv that we've um had and i think this is another another one of those shows i know i'm like i everyone jokes like i got to the end of netflix and i did we got to the end of netflix and i'm so glad to report that on september 17th there's something else to watch and it's a really funny show that will bring a lot of joy to people and uh make everyone feel good and you mentioned hamilton so obviously you had a very long uh, hiatus as so many people have in, in, yeah. in theater. What, what's it like to be um, back on stage doing um, Hamilton again, doing um, King George III? It's surreal. Every night hearing an audience laugh and applause coming at you is just surreal. I don't know how else to put it. I haven't, it's been about two weeks of performances and I still haven't accepted that it's actually happening. You know, it just felt like for a while there that it might not, that it might be, you know, several more years before we could come back together as a community and, and celebrate, you know, the medium that I love most, live theater. So it's electric because it's not just us on stage who are celebrating, it's the audience members who can't believe they're back in that audience and they're coming back and they're, you know, you always have to work hard to be at Hamilton, whether it's, you know, paying for tickets, waiting for tickets, you have to, you know, figure out so much to get there. But now you're wearing a mask and you're vaccinated and showing a vaccination card and it's very, very safe. And I just, I've never loved a group of audience members more than I have of, of these people who are showing up and taking care of us, taking care of their other audience members and showing, demonstrating very much physically how much they love theater. And uh, so it's beautiful. You know, I, it's hard for me to even talk about. Yeah. 
<laughs> no, you say it is a moving thing to be a because uh, I, I, I've been to see something in New York already, and just being back, it's kind of you feel like you're at home, and then it's surreal, and it's <laughs> it's a it's a very it's a very, very weird experience, but very yeah. grateful for everyone that's back, and you say audience members complying and, and that kind of thing. So very much so, yeah. Um, can I ask you for your um favorite uh, piece of LGBTQ plus culture? So whether it's um a film or a play or a TV series, um, any piece of culture or a person who identifies as LGBTQ+, just someone or something that's had an impact on you and resonated with you over the years? It's going to sound like I, I, whether he was in the show or not, RuPaul, Charles, is very, very important to me. Very, very important. And I'm so lucky that I've gotten to be in a project with him because watching Drag Race has made me a stronger person. I think it's like, it's given such strength and power to all of us who grew up thinking maybe we were less than or weak because we were more feminine or, you know, what uh, the idea of masculinity was, especially growing up in the Midwest, you know, and, and everyone loves sports and, you know, it's, I wasn't that kid, you know, I loved musicals. And if you can't love yourself, how the hell are you going to love anybody else? Can I get an amen? You know, RuPaul has done so much for the gay community in that TV show. And you better believe, you know, I'm just grilling him constantly for spoilers of, of Drag Race. Um, but definitely uh, that. And then, um, you know, Bette Midler was, was I'm a Bette Midler gay um, from, you know, beaches on. So. Yes. Oh, me too. Wouldn't it have been great to have been there at the Continental Baths to have uh, <laughs> seen yes. her back in the day? Because you know that she loves us right back. So it's. Oh, uh, absolutely. Beautiful. Absolutely. I did. a. I was I was at a, I performed at a birthday party for someone and she was a guest and I was doing a dance number and we all went out into the audience and I found her and I just shimmied in front of her face. And I said, this is the greatest moment of my life. And she said, me too. <laughs> and that's it. That's my only interaction with Bette Midler. And I don't need anything else. That yes. was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> um, now, one of my favorite sequences um, in the show in Chicago Party On is the, the Halloween gay club. Um, and, you know, if you look in the background, the detail in those costumes is amazing. So I wondered if you had um, a favorite scene, either because of the, the voice work that's in it or just visually when you sort of look back at the show. You know, there it's 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 weird because maybe it's the only action scene I'll ever do. And it's in a, a cartoon because no one would actually put me in an action movie but there's a scene where Daniel is working uh on a tower in in the lake and Diane has to come and save him because it's burning down and she comes on a helicopter and he has to be taken off and it's like I was like this is amazing this is you know the biggest action movie I'll ever be a part of so luckily I didn't have to do any of the stunts just the screaming <laughs> yeah I mean well, why do you think it sort of lends itself well to you know the animated form the adult animated form rather than doing a live action series of Chicago Party Arts? Because it's the the possibilities are limitless because you can do anything in animation and I think especially with the speed of what this comedy is and trying to put so much of Chicago and the heart of it into it Animation just lets you, your imagination run, run wild. And, um, you know, it's why animated uh, adult shows are so funny and such a great escape because it's nonstop comedy and you can go anywhere, including on a helicopter or, you know, driving fast speed chases or, you know, uh, or just over to Roscoe's gay bar and, you know, have a scene there. It's, it's just, you can do anything and be anyone. Well, Rory O'Malley, thanks very much. Great chatting to you. Great to meet you. Thanks, James. Thanks for having me.